Hello everyone, it is Mr. Stepstep, and I'm back again with another value discussion, this time on the Sun and Moon series set, Dragon Majesty. This is another one of those special sets coming the year after Shining Legends came out. So, like always, I'll be going through the intro, and then down below I'll have all the timestamps for everything. This should be a shorter video because this set is considerably smaller than the, some previous sets that we've talked about. But yeah, all the timestamps will be below. And also the link to this spreadsheet containing all of these sets that I've gone over so far will be down below, as well as the playlist that contains all my discussions on these individual sets. All right, so starting off with some of the basic information. This, this spreadsheet is as of 23 January, so this should be posting um, on the 25th. Sorry, this spreadsheet's actually as of 24 January. I did not look at my calendar very, very well. All right, so release date was 6 September 2018, so right around that normal special set time. Like, for example, I think Champion's Path released in September as well, but it was later September. Base card total, 70. Secret rare total, 8. So the set total is 78. So a very small set, very modest set. There's some decent cards in here, but um, a lot of people say that this is probably the worst special set or holiday set, whatever you want to call it, that's come out. Special expansion, whatever you want to call it. All right, so just going over set, the spreadsheet itself. So the card, self-explanatory, which card it is, rarity, just the rarity of the card. Uh, the raw price on TCG Player, it's the raw price rated down as of 24 January, and that's just that marketplace value. So it's basically an average of all the sold cards on TCG Player, which it ends up being around a lightly played condition for the card, sometimes a little bit better than that. Grade, um, I, I specifically look into eBay sold listings, and I try to find PSA 10s, because whether you like it or not, it's still the most common um, bought and sold grading source for Pokemon cards. So I try to reach that, and if I can't, then I get as close as possible for graded cards that have been sold recently. Sold price is the most is that most recent sold price. It's not an average. It's rounded up to the nearest dollar, not including shipping. Date of sale is what it says. It's the date of sale that it happened. So if it's sold recently, then you know maybe people are in the market or it's become available. It has a, if it hasn't been sold in a few months, then it's probably not a card that shows up as often because it's rare or people just aren't wanting to buy or sell it. And then the PSA 10 population, the number on the left is how many PSA 10s there are, and the number on the right is how many are registered through PSA. So obviously that doesn't include any of the, any of the other grading um, companies, but yeah, just it, it gives you a nice basis on what people think are collectible in general based on how many are graded, and then how well they're printed in general, just on the percentage of how many get graded to 10. All right, so now that we're through that low, oh, and the colors, if it's over orange, plus 50, yellow, plus 100, and then green is 200 plus for um, the PSA sold list or the graded sold listings. And I have another color reserved for really special cards, but there's none of those in this set. All right, so starting from the top, um, really nothing of note. I mean, you have Fiery Flint as an uncommon, but just a few sold uh, for rare. First somewhat big card is Kingdra GX, sold for over $80, which isn't too bad. Um, Victini Prism Star, I couldn't find any PSA grade. I've noticed a lot of the Prism Stars have been being graded with CGC, like in past sets. This is another set that contains Prism Stars, um, or the Prism Rares. And a CGC 9 was sold for 20 bucks, so I mean, not horrible. Um, then we go down to Altaria GX Full Art, sold for $100, which is honestly not that bad. I personally really like Altaria. It's... I mean, it's third generation, evolves from Swablu. It's just a really cool Pokemon, and it's not a Pokemon that you'd expect to be dragon type. I think that's why a lot of people like it. And it's it's kind of cute, you know? It looks soft and fluffy. Um, let's see, we have a few more cards. The Dragonite GX, I personally think that's an awesome card. It only sold for 50 bucks, and it sold very recently, but I just think that's a really good card, personally. You have the Charizard. So there is a Hollow Rare Charizard in this set. Personally, I don't think it's one of the better um, artworks for Charizard. But it is a Charizard. It's just a hollow rare in this set, so not super easy to pull, but not difficult to pull either. I mean, it's more common than, you know, your everyday GX, and there's not a ton of rares within this set either. But a PSA 10 sold for $180, but you guys will see after we go through this whole list, which is not much longer, 551 out of 1,012. So it's a little over 50%, so not horrible, but not great compared to some of the other cards in this set. But I, I guess as the numbers increase... You know, the more desperate or the the less wary the eye is at sending in the cards. Because, you know, people just want a PSA 10 Charizard. 
Um, so I think this definitely bumps up the collectability of this card a lot because of how popular it is. And of course, people are going to be wanting to have the master set Charizards. Master set of PSA 10 Charizards, which this is included in that. Uh, I got some secret rare trainer cards. We got Blaine's Last Stand Full Art. I... I'm not a huge fan of the male um, trainer cards, but, I mean, this card is just beautiful. Like, it looks sick. Like, they did Blaine really well. Blaine's Last Stand has been reprinted a bunch of times within Sun, the Sun and Moon sets, but they, they did his full art really well in this card. Like, I really like it. 150 is very fair price for it. I'm not surprised at all. Let's see. And then we start getting into some green, which is nice. We have the Reshiram GX sold for $200. Reshiram and... Uh, what is it? And Zekrom, I don't know. They're just, maybe it's because I didn't, I played through Generation 5 once. And I don't. I didn't even play through Black 2 or White 2. And I never watched the anime during that time. So I don't have like a huge, I'm not a huge fan of these legendaries. And they're honestly very forgettable because you have like Kyurem, Reshiram, Zekrom. Like they all just kind of lump together in my head. Like they're slightly different colors, but I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure if Generation 5 is your first generation, like, these are awesome cards. And, I mean, it sold for $200. Like, that's not bad. Um, it grades for a little bit less than 50%, but, yeah. You got White Kyurem GX, which I think that's the combo of Reshiram and Kyurem together, I think. Like, through the Fusion, or I, I forget what it is. But 115 not actually that great. Salamence GX Secret Rare. This card, I think, personally, this card is my favorite card in the set. It's beautiful. If I could have any card in the set, I would choose this one. Also sold for $200. A little under 50% for PSA 10s, which I thought that was interesting. Um, Zinnia Full Art. I don't know if I put this in the waifu category. I mean, one sold recently on 3 January for $100. So to me, that's a lower tier waifu. And I mean, Zinnia, I'm pretty sure she's like that dragon girl that kind of assists you with getting Rayquaza and the Rayquaza in the uh, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire video games, and I'm sure she has other roles like in the show and everything, but I don't know, just very forgettable. I saw the name, I'm like, who is this? And I looked her up, I'm like, oh yeah, she's a random dragon girl, isn't she? And then the gold card within this set, the, I don't know if it, it would maybe statistically be the hardest pull or equivalent to the hardest pull, but it, it is a very beautiful card, the Ultra Necrozma GX. It destroys everything out of the water for raw price at $77. And it's a three-way tie for first on the highest sold recently for $200 as well. Um, and it's a little over, actually, it's right under half. No, it's right. It's a little over half for PSA 10. So not too bad. If you have this card, like awesome, you have the, you. I guess you could argue the biggest set or the biggest card from this set. But I think the Salamence GX will do better in the long run because... Yeah. Ultra Necrozma, that Ultra Beast lane is just kind of weird. So, going down in some little tidbits at the bottom. We have the... I just compared it with Shining Legends. As I do more of the, uh, the special sets, even though there's not really not too many more. What, you got Hidden Phage Generations, um, Champion's Path, and I guess eventually Shining Fates, kind of? I don't know. So, I just compared these two so you can kind of see... The, the average prices between the two. So GXs, you can see almost half of Shining Legends. Full Art's actually about the same. And then the Secret Rare is obviously Shining Legends is going to crush in Secret Rare category. Because, I mean, you don't even have any that break the average of Shining Legends. But there are more cards over a dollar than in Shining Legends. And Shining Legends is, you know, a year older. So I thought that was interesting. Um, then we have... Some more interesting stuff. A master set on 10 January sold for 550 I looked at the listing, and the cards looked decent. It had everything, even the energies and reverse energies. And the Ultra Necros one was in good condition. Sorry, a little indigestion. Had a, some burger and fries tonight. A booster pack at almost $18. It's funny because I don't think this set is that collectible, like, overall. I mean, it's a special set. You can't get a booster box of it, so I can see why the packs are a little pricey, but... I don't know, 18 bucks, that's kind of steep. That's even more than Evolution's Hidden Fates, but, I mean, whatever. It's it's rare, you can't really find them. And then the Elite Trainer Rocks at 136 which you would think it would be more based on that booster back price, but, hey, I don't even know what promo comes inside of the Elite Trainer Box, but whatever. And then, obviously, there's no booster box. So, yeah, that's pretty much all for this set. You know, pretty, hopefully, a shorter video. 
Um, I'll just go through the tiers of collectible cards, in, in my opinion, really quick. So for the low tier, I do low tier, mid tier, and high tier for collectible cards within this set. It's kind of in relation to other cards, and this is more for just collecting and holding on for like the long run. Like, I'm sure there's a little bit of correlation if you wanted to do some immediate flipping with, like, you know, a couple months or a year or two. But I, I'm thinking, like, 10, 20 years down the line from now. So, low tier, I would put the Zinnia Full Art. Uh, the two Dragonite cards within this set, they don't sell for much now, but I think Dragonite is just one of those cards that people love. And I guess the more cards of his that are printed, you know, the more it'll kind of go down. But I think there are Dragonite. I'm pretty sure there's, like, Master Set Dragonite people out there. And then the White Curum Rainbow Rear. I mean, it sells for over a hundred, and it is a legendary, and it's a it's a combined legendary, so it's it's kind of cool. I personally like it, but I have to give it some credit for mid tier. The Reshiram Rainbow Rare, Blaine's Last Stand Full Art, and the Charizard card. I was debating whether or not to put the Charizard in the high or the mid, but just based on its price and how many cards there are of it, like 551 PSA tens. I mean, in relation to a lot of other cards, it's not that much, but I think just in the long run, because it is just a hollow rare, it's gonna kind of lose lose track after a while and then the high tier just two cards the salamence rainbow rare and then the ultra necrozma gold card within this set those i personally think those two are the best the most highly collectible cards within this set and i mean salamence is the number one card that i would want and then just based off of numbers ultra necrozma is up there and then you know that charizard's been graded a ton but overall definitely let me know what you guys think on this set it was a shorter video um yeah, I don't. I, I have no cards in Dragon Majesty at all. No products, no cards or anything. I wasn't collecting during this time. So I'd like to see if you guys agree or disagree with anything that I said since it's all just, you know, speculation based on, you know, a snapshot of data. But uh, yeah, just leave any feedback or anything down below. If this is your second video of mine, consider subscribing. And if you like what you saw, uh, give this video a like. Or if you don't like it, then, you know, dislike it and leave some feedback down below. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching and have a good one.